Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Injured Gadgets HTC 1X Touchscreen Glass Digitizer and LCD Replacement Guide. The first thing you want to do is take your SIM ejector tool, go ahead and remove the SIM card tray and the SIM card if necessary. Once that is complete, you can go ahead and try and separate the front screen glass from the housing. You want to use a safe open pry tool, a guitar pick, and a spudger most likely. Once you've created enough separation, go ahead and use a larger spudger, fit it in between the screen and the housing, and from here on you're going to try and separate the housing from the screen. Um, with that gap created, you're now going to take your little guitar pick and run it along each of the sides of the screen glass. This will separate the clips holding your frame to the actual touch screen glass. At this point you'll notice the battery is still probably stuck to the housing. Use a safe pry tool or a spudger to push the battery back down towards the actual glass screen. You don't want it to come up with the housing and rip the cables attached. Please note sometimes your volume buttons as well as power button will come out of the housing. You want to make sure not to lose those because you will need to put them back in later. With the back housing removed, go ahead and use your spudger and disconnect the digitizer cable on the right hand side as well as this cable shown right here. You will also want to go ahead and safely pull up the power flex. Be very careful with this, there might be some adhesive under it. Uh, you don't want to rip this cable, these are very expensive cables so be very careful with that. Now using your Phillips screwdriver, you're going to remove the following six screws as shown right here. It's going to be two on the left side, one in the middle, and three on the right side. I have seen a variation of the HTC One X which only had five screws. Don't worry if you only have five, some just have the five. With these screws removed, you can go ahead and disconnect the LCD flex cable from the phone. I'm going to try and do a close up here as best as I can so that you guys are able to see. This first cable on the bottom is actually held in with a jawbone connector. You'll want to pop that jawbone connector. Um, that top cable that I just disconnected um, well, should just come right up, but that one that I just connected is a jawbone connector. Once that's disconnected, the cable should slide out of it. With those cables removed, your board on your phone should safely come out from the housing. Now to separate the glass screen from the housing, you're going to go ahead and want to use a hot air heat gun or a blow dryer. Heat around the top, bottom, and sides of the glass screen. This is going to loosen up the adhesive holding your glass screen in place. Um, once adequate heat has been applied, you can go ahead and use a safe open pry tool, a spudger, or a guitar pick to safely separate the glass from the housing, as shown right here. It may require a little bit of prying. Um, once again, this adhesive is holding it in pretty tightly. These little black strips of adhesive uh, are actually placed there by us uh, as a temporary solution before we did the full repair on this. 
Um, when we reapply this and show you how to put it back together, we're going to show you a full repair guide. The adhesive shown right here is some of the adhesive we use. Um, and it works really nice around the sides because it is so little. It's about two millimeters wide. Before I continue showing you guys how to put the phone back together, I'm showing you how to test out your LCD display to make sure it works. Um, the LCDs on these phones are extremely delicate. The, the flex cable has to be completely plugged in. Um, here you're going to show, um, I've put it in, but I haven't pushed it on the jawbone connector, and the LCD will not cut on. Um, so in this next viewing, I'm going to show you exactly how I push the cable all the way in. I make sure it's safely in there and I do push down the jawbone connector. This time the LCD will cut on um, and you can just do that by pressing the little power button on the top. Be very care careful with that flex cable. Um, and please note at this point your touchscreen is not going to work because the touchscreen cable is not plugged in. So uh, that's a great way to test your screen out by the way. Before placing your glass screen and digitizer down I do recommend putting adhesive down the right, left, top and bottom sides of the frame. Now go ahead and put your touchscreen glass digitizer in. You'll see the uh, slot of the back housing I put it in. You'll want to put it on that far left back housing side. Um, that's going to be the cable that controls your touchscreen. And then your LCD goes through this little bottom slot right here as shown. Um, you want to make sure these go all the way through. Don't tug on them too hard. You could rip the cables or just mess up the uh, actual part. Uh, so be very careful during this process. But like I said, make sure that they're all the way through. Um, once you've made sure of that, go ahead and push down your glass against the housing, making sure it's nice, flush, um, seated correctly, and has a good tight fit. At this point, go ahead and fold your LCD flex cable as shown right here to the right side. This is a common issue people make. They don't plug it in properly. It does need to be folded to the right as shown right there. Um, and this is probably the hardest part actually of the phone. Trying to plug that LCD cable back into the, pull, into the board. Um, it doesn't really give you that much room. Um, so I'm trying to zoom in here for you guys. I'll, I'll try and show you this carefully. Always remember, like I said earlier, this LCD flex cable has to completely be inserted into this jawbone connector. If even if it is the slightest bit out, your LCD is not going to cut on. Um, I've noticed a few times where I've actually put it in and I thought it was perfectly in and I looked at it again a little bit later um, under closer inspection and I noticed that it was actually slightly out. Um, so take your time with this, double check it, make sure it's properly plugged in um, because you don't want to have to go ahead and put your phone completely back together only to realize that the screen is not coming on and the display is not showing. So I'll, uh, I'll not fast forward through this, I'll, I'll show you guys the truth and how long it takes. Um, it's not going to be fast forwarded or anything like that, you can just watch me uh, attempt to put this in. It does take a few moments. Um, sometimes you might get it immediately, sometimes it might take five minutes to get it in, but um, that's pretty much how it's done. Make sure that jawbone connector holds it tightly in there, um, and then once that's in, you also have to plug that other cable that goes above the LCD cable in. Um, I prefer to use a pair of tweezers for this, uh, just because it is a little difficult to fit your fingernails or um, your fingers under there, so you can use a pair of tweezers or whatever it is to try and get under there to plug it in properly. Once those cables are in, make sure uh, that the other cable right here as shown is still connected uh, inside the actual board of the phone. Sometimes that pops out. I'm actually glad this happened uh, for us during this repair. Um, because it's something that might happen when you're doing your repair. So uh, you'll see me try and plug this one back in. Please note this cable is attached to a jawbone connector. So if your jawbone connector is not flipped open, you need to go ahead and flip it open uh, to make sure that the cable is able to go inside that jawbone connector and see, see, be seated inside there properly.
once that is in, go ahead and lay your battery back down. Um, please note this cable right here. The actual cable plugs in on the top, but the actual cable of it goes under the battery. So make sure it's under the battery and not above it. Otherwise, you won't be able to close your housing properly. Um, at this point, I like to go ahead and put the screws back in so that the board is held down properly and doesn't really move anywhere. Once all your screws are in, go ahead and plug in your digitizer cable on the top right hand side as shown here. At this point if you want you can go ahead and power on your phone. My phone was actually already powered on so I was able to just press the power button. Um, test out the touch screen and everything before you put it all back together. It's always a good idea to do this. Um, kind of saves you time rather than putting it all back together only to realizing that you didn't plug something in back properly. At this point, go ahead and take your back housing, uh, put your power button and volume buttons back in properly, then take your full screen holding the battery in so that it doesn't pop out, and kind of push it from the top down to the bottom Make sure it's back in there tightly on all the sides, the top and the bottom. And there you have it. Your HTC One X is repaired. Go ahead and put your SIM card in if needed. If you have any questions or you want to buy the part, visit us at InjuredGadgets.com. Thank you.